Welcome back to the Maritime CEO Seafarer Leader Series powered by Ocean Technologies Group. Throughout July and August, our friends Wallum are sponsoring this mini series where we're looking at seafarers from every possible angle. Um, last week, we were with the Maritime Charities, and this week, well, we are joined by seafarers from across the world. We're going to be in Southeast Asia, in India, and the Mexican Gulf in the next few minutes. I've tasked our seafarers today, all of whom work for Wallen, uh, with a couple of questions to hopefully get to the crux of the current crew change crisis um, and how to sort of improve the life of seafarers, which I think is going to be a theme for the next few weeks. So, uh, Nidhi, thank you very much for joining us. If I, let's start with you. If, if you could have a realistic dream list of regulatory changes you'd like to see for seafarers, what would they include? For the first thing that I would like to say, being a female seafarer, I think the most important thing that for me is to have equal opportunity. If I have completed what is required, what is the basic minimum requirement for the job, I should be given a chance to at least appear for an interview. And then it, it should be decided who is better. So if I am better at a job, why not let me appear for the interview just because I'm a female? Second is especially in the time of pandemic, we've all seen how, it is, how important it is to have savings. So I think there should be some retirement opportunities or some investment or insurance plans that should be a little more specific for the seafarers. Same way, I think there, had, there has to be some specific retirement plans which are better suited for seafarers when they want to finally retire for their savings because after we finish our contract, there's no income that we have. Third, again, as a female, I think it's very important that we should have a maternity leave policy for the female seafarers as well. It doesn't matter if the company is big or small or whatever industry it is, we have maternity leave policies for the women who are working ashore. It is high time with the growing number of females in the industry, it is high time that we have a maternity leave for the female seafarers. It does not have to be same. It has to just be there. We don't want the owners to go into losses. We don't want them to feel that, you know, they should not be doing this. So it has to be a balance. So there has to be some profit for the owners and some profit for the female seafarers as well. But there should be something for the paternity leave as well. And I think if we have that, if it is customized that way, the companies who would offer that, I think they'll have a loyalty also. You can give a loyalty bonus. Instead of giving the loyalty bonus, you could say, that you'll get the maternity leave or you'll get the paternity leave. That is an added loyalty bonus. That could be an added loyalty bonus. The next thing, again, in the time of pandemic, especially, I think I have realized, companies should have a policy where if a seafarer is sailing, I should be rest assured that, God forbid, if there's an emergency in my family, like a medical emergency or any other emergency, they should assist my family so that I on board will be able to work and my mental health would be all right, knowing that somebody is there while I am working here, somebody is there taking care of my family. You know, if I could have a dream list of what other regulatory changes that I want them to include, is that to focus more on the social welfare of the seafarers. Although we're just contractual worker, we are not disposable. We need to feel that we are a part of an industry that grows. We need to feel that we are important, that we are also a part of the frontliners that is serving the world. Often I read uh, news about seafarers being abandoned by owners, salaries not being paid on time, and just, you know, just last month, one of my colleagues has died. He passed away. Without a trace, justice has not been servant up until now. I know that there are organizations that works hard to solve these problems, but the fear of this predicament instills in me is something, you know, I can't just shake off. If we focus more on the well-being of each seafarers, justice will be given to the, to the ones who lost their lives at seas, and greater avenues will be given to seafarers who would want to keep sailing. I always have this question of where do we go from here? And that after our career at sea, what all, what all other avenues we can venture in after we quit sailing? Sure, there are maritime institutions like training centers, academies, maritime companies that we can apply, but these are not just enough, you know? What I'm really trying to say is that I feel that strengthening 
uh, the welfare of the seafarer is not just about strengthening the workforce at sea, but to make things, but to focus more on things that would sustain the longevity of the career of the, each seafarers. We don't seek for a princely treatment, but only seek a safe passage to our countries and to our loved ones. We have been performing our duties diligently without any downturn, keeping our vessels moving. As a maritime key workers, countries should relax their stringent rules and regulations for the seafarers. They should accept the seafarers with the open arms. They should bypass the visa restrictions at the moment. A discharge booklet of a seafarer should be accepted by all countries. Special seafarer flights should be made available in key places to key ports. The countries that our ships call should at least provide us bare minimum facilitation for a transit corridor. What do you think of the way that politicians around the world have ignored you and your fellow seafarers over the last four or five months? I think it would not be just for us to say that they have ignored us. Yet, I would like to say that what should have been done was not done. In the past few months, we've seen there was no recognition of the seafarers. We as seafarers move almost 90% of the global trade. At one point, the entire world came to a complete halt, but the ships did not stop. Not one ship stopped. Every seafarer did what they said that they would do. I think they all deserve a lot of respect for that because working in that kind of environment, in that kind of stress is very difficult. There are people who had been on board for more than a year. It's a long time for people who had in the lockdown should understand by now what they have done for one or two months with internet. Some of the people have been doing it without internet for over a year. But at the same time, why was bringing seafarers home not a part of the disaster management plan? In many countries, seafarers are not recognized as the key workers. We have applauded doctors, nurses, air hostesses, police workers. Then why did we, as a society, fail to give the same respect to the seafarers who brought the food, who brought everything, all the supplies they brought from all over the world to our homes? Why did we fail to give them the recognition that they needed? It is only last week, I think, that the government has even mentioned it the seafarers in India. While I would say that we as seafarers have not been completely ignored, on a large scale, we have been. As a seafarer, I'm not saying bring back everyone right now because there has to be a risk assessment carried out. There are a lot of risks which is there with a plan. And it takes a lot of time to implement a plan in a good way. If a seafarer was assured that you please work like you are supposed, like you had promised and we expect you to and we will somebody will take care of your family and we are trying day and night to bring you back home safely i think the situation would have been much better the suicide rate what we can see today on board would have been much lower it is very unfair to say that our government officials have failed us and ignored us for the last four months the very fact that they are doing their best to combat this crisis at large is something that we need to be thankful for. I believe that addressing the needs of people around the world should be the ultimate goals of this government officials by collaborative means and collective efforts. If the government refuses to open its borders to the seafarers who badly wants to go home, who badly wants to be with their families, there is nothing we can do about it. Because somehow we cannot even blame the government for closing its border as much as they want to open it. They cannot compromise its own country, knowing that the pandemic has spread worldwide. Seafarers are one of those neglected professionals who have been overlooked by many international organizations, but also by their own countries. It is very disappointing to see that these are the same government officials and politicians who supported the Mercy flights for stranded tourists to bring them home back, but completely ignored the seafarers who continue to work like frontliners running the global economy. Uh, well, thank you. And um, we will be back next Thursday with another Wallen sponsored Maritime CEO Seafarer Leader Series. Thank you, everyone, for participating. In the meantime, everyone stay sane and sanitized.